Pope Francis has his eyes set on Bishop Strickland of Tyler, Texas, the diocese just next to me down in Texas. I'm actually in New Mexico now, which is absolutely beautiful and glorious and definitely not as hot as Texas. What's going on? Well, Pope Francis has issued an apostolic visitation. What is an apostolic visitation? An apostolic visitation is when usually a diocese, a seminary, a monastery, a convent, a religious order um, has a canonical visitation of usually bishops, could be cardinals, who represent the Pope and do an investigation to see if everything is legit. And sources are saying that this apostolic visitation ordered by Pope Francis on the good Bishop Strickland has to do with his financial dealings in the diocese. But time out, let's just wait a second here. Bishop Strickland has been critical on Joe Biden, claiming he's a Catholic, Nancy Pelosi, receiving communion, on the jabby jab, pokey poke health crisis that we went through beginning in 2020. And he is also vocal about the alphabet agendas. In fact, he just got back from Los Angeles where he led the prayer rally with rosary in hand with the L.A. Dodgers, with the Perpet Sisters of Perpetual Degeneracy. He gets back from that, and he's got visitators waiting for them. One of them is, got a picture here. It's important that we bring it up. This, Bishop Kakanis, Emeritus Bishop of Tucson, uh, a Bernadine Bishop, I'm not going to go into his details. Do your own research. Go online, read about this bishop, and see if he's been someone who has been courageous, open, orthodox, or whether he's done cover-ups, helped out the McCarrick wing of the church. Why is a guy like this being invited in to investigate Bishop Strickland. Let me give you some of the facts. Bishop Strickland is 64 years old. He's the Bishop of Tyler, Texas. Where is Tyler, Texas? Tyler is between Dallas and Louisiana. In my opinion, it's one of those beautiful parts of Texas. I would love to live there. I consider Bishop Strickland a friend. I've met him several times. We've had lunch. I think he's a good man. I think he has a good heart. He's genuine. He's one of the very few bishops Currently in the United States, who has learned how to celebrate the traditional Latin Mass, and I salute him for that. He has a very, you know, Texas has a lot of Catholics in it. Uh, in particular, a lot of historically Irish, German, but especially Hispanic Catholics coming from Mexico. The Diocese of Tyler is rather small. It only has, according to what I found online, 55,000 Catholics. But get this, Bishop Strickland has 21 seminarians, 21 men in priestly formation. So I don't know what the ratio is on that, but I bet his ratio beats 90% of the bishops out there. Also, his diocese is doing great financially. A couple years ago, he had a $2.3 million diocesan fundraiser, and he raised it six months early. What does that tell you? It means the lay people in Tyler, Texas, trust their bishop. Meanwhile, all over the United States, bishops can't complete their diocesan fundraisers. Why? Because the lay people do not trust them. Now, Bishop Strickland is also very active on Twitter. And by the way, I'm going to do some questions and comments here. I'm just getting the facts out for y'all. Then we can have a little discussion live. I am live right now on YouTube. Facebook and Twitter, and I'll be taking questions and comments from all of you on all three platforms. Bishop Strickland is active on Twitter. You should follow him on Twitter. He has a lot of things to say as it regards the pokey poke to avoid certain viruses. He has called out Nancy Pelosi, says she should not be receiving Holy Communion. As I mentioned, he was leading the prayers 
and the prayers of protection and the rosary at the L.A. Dodgers. Just what was that? A week and a half ago? But here's where things, I think this is why he's getting a visitation. On May 12, 2023, Bishop Strickland said, quote, Pope Francis is leading a program of undermining the deposit of faith. That shot's fired to Pope Francis. You have a bishop in good standing, a bishop of a diocese, and he says, Pope Francis has a program undermining the deposit of faith. Primarily, Bishop Strickland here is talking about the Synod on Synodality. Just about a month later, a little more than a month later, on June 21st, Bishop Strickland criticized the new Vatican document calling for, get this people, a synodal discussion about women in holy orders, particularly deacons, women deacons, married priests, and the inclusion of those in the LMNOP lifestyle. You can also see a tweet recently here on the screen. This comes from Bishop Strickland. To be persecuted for speaking truth is an honor every Christian should be willing to embrace. It is walking with Jesus Christ, who is truth incarnate. If we know Jesus, is, if we know Jesus it is easier to speak his truth no matter what forces oppose us. The opposition is temporary. Jesus is forever. Yes, Your Excellency. Amen and amen. Spoken like an apostle. Spoken like a successor to the apostles. We talk all about apostolic succession. What about apostolic success? Apostolic truth. And that's where Bishop Strickland excels. More facts. He has been an open online critic of James Martin, the Jesuit, Father James Martin, who writes a lot about bridges and has rainbows on the cover of his books and celebrates certain parades, celebrating certain sins. You know, the sin of the devil who was so proud. And he's also been outspoken on certain moral topics that touch U.S. policies, in particular policies, as you've already seen him I'm talking about them, that Joe Biden would not like, things that Joe Biden is against. And he's also been very vocal on voting for pro-life candidates. So I was just on Steve Bannon a couple hours ago, and I was saying, you know, Really to understand this, this isn't just a, a hit from the Vatican or a hit from Pope Francis. You have to really understand the infiltration. You have to understand that Joe Biden and Pope Francis are buddies. Once you understand that, you start to understand Catholic American politics, Catholic American machinations. You understand how the sausage is made. Also, one final to, uh, note here, Bishop Strickland is very vocal about satanic demonstrations by actual Church of Satan people. They actually attacked his diocese, Tyler, Texas, and he fought back spiritually as a true Catholic bishop would, as St. Peter would, as St. Paul would. But none of the other bishops who let priests molest children or transfer them around None of the other bishops who have zero vocations in their diocese, they're not getting investigated by Pope Francis. The Jesuit order, not getting investigated by Pope Francis. The Franciscan Third Orders, who have all kinds of horrific molestations and heresy, they're not getting an apostolic visitation. No, the good Bishop Strickland is getting this apostolic visitation. I was reminded just last year, a little over a year from, uh, from today, Bishop Fernandez Toros of Puerto Rico, he also received a papal visitation and he was removed from office because of his words against a certain pokey poke vaccine. Ooh. Great, I said the word. He was removed from office on March 9th, 2022. The reason given 
Did they talk about Pokey Poke in the reason given? No. They said he was removed from his office as bishop because of insubordination to the Pope, Pope Francis. Will that happen here with Bishop Strickland? And how can we help Bishop Strickland? Number one, you pray the rosary every day and you're going to give at least a decade to Bishop Strickland. Let, if all of you watching right now, I mean, there's over 500,000 subscribers here on the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. If half of you, that's 250,000 people, could pray four rosaries, that's a million rosaries. That provides spiritual protection for Bishop Strickland. If all 500,000 of you pray, pray 10 rosaries, that would be 5 million rosaries for Bishop Strickland. That's what we need to do. Now, Bishop Strickland, I've spoken to him. He's asking for nothing to be done yet. I think the proper thing now is for the investigation to move through. But I think prayers, I think going online and letting our presence, letting our voice be heard because this is going to be a, I mean, remember when they canceled Father Frank Pavone or Father Altman? This is now getting to the bishop level. We have to let our voice heard. All right, I'm going to take some questions, some comments. Uh, if it's a question, use a question mark so I know that it is a question. Uh, if you like this video and you like Bishop Strickland, hit the like button. Let's support Let's share this video. People need to know it. There are people out there right now who have never heard of Bishop Strickland. Hit the share button. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share it everywhere. Copy and paste it. Text it to your friends. Share this video. And if you're new to the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast, please consider subscribing and joining the over 1 million people who subscribe on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Rumble. Let's get to your questions First comment is from Paul, bring back Father Altman, amen and amen. We can't have these people canceling the clergy who are defending the dignity of the Eucharist, the dignity of the unborn child in the womb, and proclaiming traditional Catholic orthodoxy. Here's a comment on YouTube from Cindy C. All we should be praying for our enemies, Bishop Strickland is bold, and I worry about his safety. Lord, protect him. Amen. Why don't we pause and say Hail Mary for him now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Going back into your comments and into your Questions. Ghosty says, how can we hold Pope Francis Bergoglio responsible for this and show our outrage? Uh, social media is very powerful. I, don't, I think a lot of Catholics are like, uh, social media, let's just pray. Definitely pray. That's the most important thing. But uh, I know for a fact that people in Pope Francis' office watch this YouTube channel. I know for a fact that people in Pope Francis' offices watch the Twitter stream of prominent Catholics like Bishop Strickland. They watch all of this. They watch our YouTube videos. They see what we say. And there is a massive growth of support for Bishop Strickland. This puts more and more pressure on them because of what they're going to have to deal with. If it looks more and more like every single bishop priest, friar, and nun who teaches the traditional Catholic Orthodox faith is canceled over and over and over. They are proclaiming that they follow a new religion that is not the traditional Roman Catholic religion. St. Damien, Dr. Marshall, do you like the Knox Bible? No. 100% no. It's horrible. I'm very much against the Knox Bible. I know it's trendy in some trad circles. When you're talking about the Dewey Rames Bible, well, the Knox Bible's kind of legit too. No, I do not like the Knox Bible. There are some really theologically horrible translations in the Knox Bible. I like Knox himself as a person, as a theologian. I like Knox on the Antichrist. I think Knox's translation of the Bible is not good. 
and you should stick with the Dewey Rames if you're an English speaker, or the Vulgate if you know Latin. All right, back into your comments and into your questions. Cortland says, it seems this Pope kicks to the curb um, those that he doesn't agree with. It's so sad. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Amen and amen. Lots of people just posting great comments here supporting Bishop Strickland, and I, I support that as well. I'm going to make my window a little smaller so I can see your comments. Please hang tight, everybody. Okay, here we go. Uh, Dr. Marshall, have you heard of the PMAS at Our Lady of Grace Catholic Church in New Jersey? Listen, there are so many of these happening all across the country, like a hundred, a hundred. It is so common, it is so accepted, and you must under no circumstances attend those. No way. Humility, not pride, is the way. Going back into your comments and into your questions, a lot of people just offering their prayers. That's great. Planet Yorkie, what about the NIV for the New Testament? 100% no. Dewey Rames, people get the Dewey Rames. Lala Trujillo says, I'm not judgmental. I pray daily for Pope Francis. We're just not blind to the truth. Wake up already. I'll send a prayer for you. May Jesus reveal, reveal the truth for you. This is not about hating people. It's not about hating Pope Francis. Uh, this is about what is true. What is true? Is it, does God want people to mutilate themselves? Does God define matrimony? Or do we define matrimony? Or does the United States define matrimony? Or does Joe Biden define matrimony? Is Jesus the way, the truth, and the life, or is he one of the many pathways to heaven, like Buddha, Muhammad, the uh, Hindu scriptures, or is Jesus the only way? See, these are the very basic tenets of biblical, orthodox, Catholic Christianity. We're just speaking them. We're just saying, no, children should not be exposed to this. Bishop Strickland says that, and now he's got two apostolic bishop visitors all up in his grill. H to the no. Do not support that. No way. We must support Bishop Strickland. Pray for Bishop Strickland. There's a good question here from Teresa Briggs. Props to Teresa. Why aren't more bishops standing with Strickland, a true man of God? I'm going to take a sip of coffee and let you all think about that. Where are his brother bishops? Where's Bishop Barron? Where's Bishop Corleone? Hey, baby. Okay, all right. Okay, say hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> this is my daughter, Elizabeth. Do you need this? Yes, I'll trade you off. This right here? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I just need to trade you off because I'm going to see. <laughs> Got it. Good call. You're awesome. My niece, here's some, here's dad with a webcam moment. My niece needs a diaper change. And I was using the diaper box as a support for my laptop. So they need the diaper box, so my daughter got the diaper box. <laughs> got our lo-fi operations here. All right. Here's one from Cort oh, Cortland again. I'm still so sad about Father Frank Pavone. He was dismissed for idiotic reasons. Those doing the right thing are being persecuted. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think they want to do to lay people like me? They want to cancel us too. Fortunately, canon law makes it very difficult. So I was just saying, where are the brother bishops? Where's Bishop Barron right now? Where's Word on Fire? Where is... Cardinal Burke. We want to hear from you, Cardinal Burke. Where is, thinking of Americans, Archbishop Corleone, um, Archbishop Chaput, Archbishop Gomez, where are you at? Where are you at? 
Is he going to stand alone? Well, you know what was interesting? And it was super sad. When Father Frank Pavone got canceled, not only was there silence from many priests, that a lot of priests just got online and dogpiled onto Pavone, threw him under the bus. No charity. Sad. Sad. Where are the other bishops to support? You know why? There's silence because they know if they open their mouth for Bishop Strickland, they get an apostolic visitation. Dominoes. Dominoes. Here we go. Cardinal Donardo. Where's he at? Cardinal Supich. We know where he's at. We know where he's at. Cardinal Tobin. Where he at? Y'all need to, you lay people, you have to be the voice. You have to get loud. You have to support. We got to do it with our voice, with our money, with our presence. We need Pope Francis to know, hey, I may not live in Tyler, Texas, but he's my bishop. I'm a sheep. I can hear the sound of the shepherd in the voice of Bishop Strickland. Hmm. We know where the Jesuits are. We know where the soupage, we know where the McCarrick gang is with all the nephews, all the Chicago Bernadine Lavender Mafia crew. We know where they're all at too. If you're enjoying this video, like and subscribe, share. Here's my buddy, Kennedy Hall. The depths of homosexuality in the clergy is the main reason. We need some St. Peter Damien to expose all the cockroaches. Why can't the bishops band together and make some noise, strength in numbers? Because they're, they did. Ricky, they got together and they are promoting BLM, immigration, uh, and they're quietly, you know, when all the stuff went down to the LA Dodgers, what'd they do? They all banded together in their silence. Oh, but Taylor, they issued a PDF document online saying that they were deeply disappointed. So what? So what? Imagine my house is invaded by a bunch of sisters of perpetual degeneracy and I, I issue a PDF statement, I am deeply disappointed that this happened. Oh, come on, go pound sand, that does nothing. Issuing a PDF document expressing the feelings of dis disappointment is not apostolic. Imagine St. Peter or St. Paul saying, I am deeply disappointed in the church of Corinth. No, come on. Um, someone asks here, this is St. Damien, do you think Bishop Paprocki may be next? He has been accusing bishops of heresy recently. Yeah, I think uh, there's other bishops who are on the gray area here, like a Bishop Chaput, Corle Corleone, Paprocki. Uh, they can either hide and hope it doesn't come to them, or they can band together. Personally, I always think strength in numbers. I think of masculine brotherhood, of accountability, of fellowship, friendship, working together, unite the clans. That's the way forward. Hanging out Bishop Strickland to, to dry does nothing. It's going to get you. Unite the clans, get together. All right, I'm going to take a, a couple, couple more questions and comments here. Oh, one thing I did not uh, mention so far is it's already been released that these two bishop visitators who are in Tyler, Texas, asking questions, one of the questions they've asked the diocesan staff is, who would be a good replacement for Bishop Strickland, even though he's got about 10 years more to go? In other words, they are there to replace Bishop Strickland. That's the agenda. And then what happens to him? Uh, 
All right. People are talking about Altman, Pavone. Looking at your comments, looking at your questions. United we stand, divided we fall. Bishop Gomez tattled. Strickland did his job. That's my sense of it. Gomez, who everyone said, oh, Archbishop Gomez is Opus Dei. He's conservative. It's a joke. Literally a joke. Gomez, look at Gomez's track record in L.A. He's the Archbishop of Los Angeles. By the way, I once ghost wrote a sermon for Archbishop Gomez a long time ago. I think he started off good. I think over time, the liberal agenda and the Lavender Mafia whittled away at his conscience over the years. Just look at his track record. Look at the decisions that were made under Bishop Gomez. Looking at your comments and questions, <laughs> Kennedy Hall says maybe Bishop Hunder should replace him. Wash hands, wash hands. That would be, well, why not? I mean, I don't want Strickland replaced, but I mean, yeah. Uh, traditional Thomas says Bishop Strickland is the new Archbishop Lefebvre. I wouldn't go, I mean, I love Lefebvre, I love Strickland. I wouldn't go that far yet because. We, we know of a many decade story of Strickland and the battle he fought. I think Bishop, I'm sorry, Lefebvre, I think Bishop Strickland's battle is just beginning right now. We'll see how it goes. Um, what are the Knights of Columbus if not to defend their bishop? Man, Knights of Columbus, guys. I'm a knight. They are not stalwart Orthodox defenders coming out strong. I know I'm going to catch some flack on this, but I mean, and then there's, there's great Knights of Columbus councils and all that, and they do a lot of great work, all right? And I'm still pro Knights of Columbus, and I still am one. But in recent years, it's been very much silence. Again, I just want to say I'm pro Knights, I'm pro the founding, I'm pro the vision, I'm pro what they do and all that. But when it comes to supporting awesome bishops, I wish there was just more energy. Okay. All right, one more comment. Looking for a good one. Here it is. Here's the good. Here's the final comment question. Why do American bishops get punished but not the breakaway German bishops? You know the answer, Alberto. Pope Francis agrees with the synod of synodality with the German bishops. Blessing of unnatural unions, women on the altar doing deaconette, deaconette kind of things. Pope Francis, his crew, they like the German experiment. And they want it to go on. They do not like Bishop Strickland. I say it all the time on this podcast. Acta non verba. It's Latin. Actions, not words. If you really want to know the caliber of a friendship, of a business associate, of a family member, anyone in your life, always, always, always go on the biblical principle of acta non verba. Actions, not words. Words are cheap. I can tell you whatever you want. Look at my life. Look at my decisions. Look at my friendships. Those are the actions that tell who I am as a person. When it comes to Pope Francis or your local bishop, look at their actions, not their words. That's the key to navigating all of this. All right, like, subscribe. Let's close. Uh, we'll close up with the Our Father, and we'll offer it for Bishop Strickland. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for Joseph Strickland. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thanks for watching. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. And God bless Bishop Strickland.